We're here right now at Harding Park with one of the professors of Fitz and Brooks University here. It is Rod Brooks with me here from KMBR. Um, how are you enjoying yourself out here today? Man, love it, love it. You know, it just watching golf on TV, it's just, it's kind of removed. It's kind of far away. But when you see these guys up close making golf balls do what they wanted to do, it really is, uh, really is cool. Now, you've been in the game um, being on Sports Talk Radio for a while now. How many years has it been? I've uh, been in the Bay Area for 18 years, August of 1997, yeah. Wow, wow. And what, how'd you get into this? First of all, when did you know that you wanted to enter this? I, you know, I, I, I knew as a kid, um, you know, I loved football all my life, but I remember being, I don't know, man, eight, nine years old and being more into the pregame shows and the halftime shows than I was in the actual game. And this is well before ESP, and this is when it was just, you know, CBS had the NFC package and uh, NBC had the AFC package and then Monday Night Football back when Howard Cosell was there, O.J. Simpson. So this is a long time ago, but I was always intrigued by that. And so, you know, I, I graduated from high school in 1989 and went right to college, and that was right about the time that sports talk radio was still was, was taken off. So I knew by the time I graduated high school that this is what I wanted to get into. And the, the fact that sports talk radio was taken off and it was really booming, that just gave another avenue. You know, you didn't have to go on television, even though ESPN was up and running and, and starting to gain that foothold. You didn't have to go on television. You could do it in radio. So, you know, I, I did a little bit of television. Everybody wants to be on television. So I did a little bit of television, but radio was kind of the, not, not the easiest lane, but the fastest lane. And so you know, started a little bit in college, went back to Houston, did it there, and then came out here in August of 97, you know, back on the ticket 1050, you know, when that started, and uh, been out here ever since. But, you know, I, I knew, like I said, back when I was a kid, that I was always intrigued by the athletes and what made them tick. And there's only one way, as you know, to find out what an athlete is thinking, and that's to go and talk to him. And there's only one way to talk to him. There's several ways now with Twitter, but there's really only one way to talk to him. That's get a media credential and go and talk to him. Now, what got your foot in the door? Did you go to journalism school or? Yeah, what? yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to journalism school and like I said and went back and you know I, I, I got lucky because I've only worked in two places and that's in Houston where I'm from. If I got out, of, if I got out of school and then and then here, but you know I was lucky enough to hook up with a, a 5,000 watt radio station and the guy who owned the station also did the morning sports talk show and he needed an intern and my job was literally in the days before the internet you had to read newspapers I read newspaper and it highlighted things so he could sit down at 603 in the morning look at the newspaper and then start to do the show uh, his name is uh, Dan Patrick not the Dan Patrick of ESPN formerly but his name is Dan Patrick in Texas he used to be a local local uh, 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 local sports uh, anchor. He is now the lieutenant governor of Texas, which is the oddest thing in the world. But he needed he needed an intern. I became his intern. Once I got my foot in the door, you know, my thing was do whatever I needed to do. So I got coffee, got laundry, watered plants. But then after a while, they needed somebody to go and get tape at games. And so, okay, well, I'll do that because not only was I going to see a game, but I was also getting the opportunity to find out what made athletes tick. I was too scared to ask any questions, but I went, got tape, there was free food, and so I just kind of just found my way, and then, you know, once I got confident enough, I started, you know, sending out tapes of the stuff I was doing, really as a reporter. I thought that's where it was, it was gonna, my career was gonna go. But, uh, I, you know, I did a little bit of hosting, and then they needed some young, cheap host out here, and, and that's how it happened. Well, I guess part of the big, greatest thing of being in the media is the free food <laughs> for, for all the events, so that is important. How have you been able to, you know, obviously set these goals that you've reached, and how have you been able to attain those goals? Well, first and foremost, um, my family, you know, my mom and my pops and, and, you know, all the people that, you know, stayed on me to make sure I went to school, make sure I didn't goof off, but also supported me too because, you, you know, what, what's funny, you know, my mom was pretty simple, my dad, it was, it was fairly simple, but my grandmother, you know, she didn't understand this whole, well, wait a minute, you got to talk sports? You know, I remember, I remember her telling me one day, you know, why don't you just get a job at UPS? And I'm like, no, oh, I'm, I'm dead serious. Um, but, you know, they, they all supported me. And, and you know, you know my, my wife now and, and my, you know, even bigger family, you know, they all support me. But also, I mean, it's, it's, it sounds trite, but it is hard work. And if you want it bad enough, you do it. And there's got to be some luck, but, you know, you make your own luck by being a good person and and you'll make some mistakes and all that kind of stuff but i, I it's just it's, it's just really just a matter of just kind of i wanted to do it you keep plugging away and and when you get you know two 
around an organization with good people. You just stay there and you just try and make yourself indispensable. And if there's luck on your side and there's God on your side, you know, you you, you can make it work. It's, it's, I'm not trying to make it sound easy. It's not easy, but, you know, I, I'm, I feel like I'm living proof. If I can do it, anybody. So obviously you're a huge talent in the Bay Area, but it also takes some skill. What kind of skills did you need to be able to get to this level? Well, I mean... I was going to say mastery of the English language, but I've yet to do that yet, but definitely an understanding of the English language. But really, you know, especially when it comes to sports talk radio, it's, it's, it's interpersonal skills. You know, people, they either have to like you or they have to want to listen to you, even if they don't like you. I, I think I'm lucky enough to where people like me, like what we do, Bob and, Bob and me, and, and so, the, so they listen. But, you know, really... I, I just think it's just about being a good person, really. And, and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back here because, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm human. You know, I do and say dumb stuff all the time. But, you know, really, it's just if you're genuine, people respond to that. And I would like to think that I'm genuine. You know, I'm not I'm not out trying to make my name by stepping on people or, or saying stuff about people. I'm, you know, I'm out to just, you know, have a good time and just talk about sports. And, and you know, I think when, when people know that you're genuine and you also know what you're talking about you know you put those two things together you you can you can have a you can have a long career here you have a long career anywhere Ray, well we really appreciate your time and um uh, it means a lot for you to be able to talk to us and, and let the youth know what it takes what advice would you have for someone in high school or college that wants to step in in your shoes well i, I mean th listen um if you want to do it bad enough do it and i know for us all right for people of color I know it's rough, whether it's a lack of economic opportunities, whether it is not being encouraged to uh, uh, to learn, to be smart, to enrich your mind, to go to college. But do not let anybody, no matter who they are, do not let anybody stop you from doing what you want to do. It's going to be tough, but you have to find a way to persevere. Be true to yourself. Be good to your family. Be good to all, be good to all people. And I promise you that stuff will come back to you. I know that, unfortunately, and this has been going on, you know, I was just talking to a friend of mine about this a couple of days ago. It, it, it saddens me, it breaks my heart that since forever, young black men are being murdered in the streets by the people who are supposed to protect us. But young black men, young black people, but especially young black men, protect yourselves. Keep yourselves as best you can out of those situations because they have a license to kill and they are using that license. Don't let it happen to you. I know it's hard because I know it's hard out there in those streets and it's hard the way things are now economically with the haves basically pushing down the have-nots. But do not let them make you out to what they want you to be. And do not let them hurt you and take your humanity. Stay as far away from those people who want to do that to you as best you possibly can and let God be with you. Well, that's definitely hard to finish after that because that's a, a definitely an important subject that we all have to deal with in our lives. Um, but this is my first time meeting you and you are the Professor Brooks. I want to let you uh, see what my what my grade is for today. Well, how did I do? Oh, we're always giving out A pluses at Fitz and Brooks University. <laughs> no, great, great. Man. You graduate with honors. All right, thanks a lot. All right, we're here with Rod Brooks. It's Brendan Anderson. We'll catch you on the rebound.